welcome back to my channel. So today I thought I might talk about the Taj Mahal building in India. A subscriber by the name of Truth Matters asked me to have a squeeze at this building and it's obviously I'd heard of it before but you know we've heard of these our whole lives. Have we ever really looked into them? Besides holiday brochures, perhaps. Not me personally. I've never been to India. But a pretty interesting story that we're gonna we're gonna talk about, and we're gonna talk about a few things today, just to mix it up. So the Taj Mahal, the tomb, is a centerpiece. They say. Uh, this building was built by Emperor Shah Jahan himself. You know, there's there's actually no list of builder. Why don't you just get a generic answer? Built by Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan in memory of his wife, Mumtaz Mahal. And this was his favorite wife. You gotta remember, emperors and kings usually had up to 10 wives, but this wife needed a bloody huge tomb. Which I smell bullshit because the tomb being 17 hectares, that's 42 acres in a complex which includes a mosque and a guest house and set in the formal guarded gardens bounded on three sides by, by crenellated wall. which crenellated is a battlement. And when I think of battlement, my brain just goes straight to the Great Wall of China. So when I even looked up battlement, it's the same as Wikipedia. This is a crenellated wall. There's an essay on my channel that I read by someone named Bennett Lee Ross, who discusses a timeline of the Tartarians. And let's say that this is the north side, and this over here is the South China side. They say that the Tartarians built this in the late 17th century or mid, built this wall to keep the encroaching Chinese out of Tartary. Obviously made of brick, something we definitely identify with Tartarian buildings or old world buildings. But back to the Taj Mahal and its extraordinary, extraordinarily gifted emperor who was also an architect building this enormous onion dome, bulbous dome. And when I look at this, <clears throat> it, I feel like I've seen it before. And you probably might be thinking the same thing with the minarets on each four corner and usually some symmetrical dome work in the center. I mean, look at the people, how small they are, just to give you an idea of its size. But as you can see, these people are miniature just dwarfed by this huge building. So, let's take a look at the Wikipedia page a bit further on. And today's gonna be a bit more relaxed. We're just gonna have a talk through some things. Share Johan himself up on a globe and of course exp uh, displayed in the Smithsonian Institute Cupid there's the wife or his favorite wife who is dedicated this to so let's just say that his wife died in 1632 one of his wives 
He decided to start building this in 1633. Mind you, he's the architect, mourning his dead wife. And starts building it. And this only took 20 years. Pretty good. Pretty good for an emperor. They say it cost up to a bill, uh, yeah, a billion American dollars. <laughs> um, and taking 20 years is, is a lot quicker than another dome we looked at in Florence, Italy. <clears throat> And this was built by Filippo Brunelleschi. I butcher his name, I'm so sorry. But this took over a century. And also built by a first time architect. Taking him, I think they said, 30 years to complete this dome. His first attempt, he also designed the machinery to hoist the masonry up here over 40,000 ton of red brick so you can see my video for more info about that ridiculous story but we're not really looking for ridiculous stories today I just thought that was pretty silly should we head back to so a bit more information Specific inspiration came from successful Timurid and Mughal buildings, including the Gur i Amir. And when I said, doesn't it look familiar, but you don't know where you've seen it, just have a look at these reoccurring styles. Not so much here, but this is the inspiration of the Taj Mahal, so they say. And I think one of the most intriguing things about it is when you look at it from Google Earth. Here we have the Taj Mahal from Google Earth. And looking very familiar itself. If you watched Campbell's video recently, he, ta he looked at the uh, Angkor Wat grid system, palace. And just take a look. Some very reoccurring design going on. Obviously, I'm not saying they're built by the same civilization. But was there many civilizations as advanced as so-called Tartarians? And I think that we can lose focus on who built them and... I think, more importantly, how in common they are with each other, regardless of who built them. Have a look at Angkor Wat from up high. You've got the water that surrounds the site. Obviously bridges to gain access. And here you have the water surrounding, not so much surrounding, but Obviously the dome in the battlement sort of style crenellated wall. When you look at Florence with its dome here, that's the uh, Cathedral di Santa Maria del Fiore that we've just looked at. And it's in its battlement style closed in city wall being the centerpiece again near water and having its own star fort just down here. But this is clearly a trapezium style star fort, bastion fort, whichever you like. I would call this a bit more of a bastion where it's not a perfect star and it has these battlements that jut out. So we have one cathedral near, its, near water, centered, in a city wall with the water. Obviously, okay, you can say that's a general city makeup, but the Taj Mahal has its own battlements. So we'll just type in the Agra Fort. It was on the other side, my apologies. And look at the size of this thing. 
in relation the distance but definitely another trapezium style star fort called the Agra fort in India with really mysterious looking battlements like these I've never seen this style with a circle instead of you know pointed shapes very interesting um, but the Taj Mahal itself on the exterior <clears throat> has these all these different motifs not on the uh, the minarets it's on the on the walls of the exterior and the interior they say these plant motifs and we'll have a look at this one picture this in your memory we're gonna go somewhere else somewhere not in India somewhere in Turkey called the Green Mosque in Bursa also known as the Mosque of Mehmed the first part of a larger complex located on the east side of Bursa dome on top minarets let's take a closer look These are very cool sort of reverse structures that you find in India and East Asia. It's almost as if it's a mold. Some sacred style geometry going on. More of the same is this right here. Perhaps reaching but definitely flowers in a very similar style on a domed building with four minarets and it's something that's not recent again sharing the same theme the Hagia Sophia and this one really caught my eye beautiful dome top and almost bastion style fort looking fortifications we believe this was a tomb or just a chapel to sing in such extravagant architecture I wonder if this one has an architect or again built by an emperor some huge sheep moving on another Turkish mosque called the Blue Mosque oh no the Sultan Ahmed Mosque or Blue Mosque was constructed by Sadefka Mehmed Agha on the orders of Sultan Ahmed. So this one has an architect and at one stage had six of these tall towers and many many small domes almost hundreds the interior so just a place to come and sing now remember this isn't exactly how it would have been after its completion I think some some of the most complicated stories I've ever come across originate in this part of the world as well as Jerusalem Israel etc that area with all of its history with Christians Jews Muslims all fighting over the centuries pretty interesting stuff I mean one two three four and where's this one I didn't really catch how that one was it almost looks like it's outside of the wall but perhaps they moved it were never just owned by one person one town one dis dynasty one culture these sort of towns that you see this is the old the old city of Jerusalem looking a little like a bastion fort itself but over the centuries continually conquered captured recaptured etc and during those years the interiors changed obviously to suit the new religions that it's now barracking for overnight 
cathedral, they say. Product of the Byzantine Empire, perhaps. Almost looking like the sort of thing you would see at Pumapunku. Not saying they're related. I mean, look how old this tree is, and it was probably landed there, you know, a hundred years after this was originally destroyed. Maybe even two, three hundred years, who knows. It seems to be like it was standing here once. You've got these other columns. Method centering, having a structure in the interior, building your bricks around it. Huge, absolutely. I mean, look at the door. And that door would be five or six times a human because for some reason we loved building huge hallways even though we were five foot tall but extravagant is better and let's have roofs 100 meters tall get these grubby little finger marks on this marble wall the topic of giants is fairly interesting i definitely have an interest in it we'll look at something in just a moment Here's the Dome of Rock, perhaps the inspiration to the Taj Mahal and also other domes around the world, seeming as this was built in 691, I really hope they're not saying till 692, at the order of Umad Khalif Abd al-Malik, during the second fitna on the site of the second Jewish temple. Destroyed during the Roman siege of Jerusalem in 70 CE, the original dome collapsed in 1015 and was rebuilt in 1022-23. The Dome of the Rock is in its core one of the oldest extant works of Islamic architecture. Obviously a heritage listed site, they say Jerusalem's most recognizable landmark, which is pretty accurate because this place is a bit of a ghost town. I mean, doesn't this just look like a product of thousands and thousands of years of war? This is supposed, supposedly the most holy place on earth. You've seen Vatican City, almost as if a mud flow ran down this way. And when you look at the western wall, which is part of the old city of Jerusalem. We'll have a look from a bird's eye angle. You can see it pretty much. It runs along this way, down here, across. And they say it juts out here, but I've seen another one where it just goes straight across here, just touching the City of David logo and into this point. So here's your dome structure. Here is your water flow. Here is what they say it would have looked like. Wall, more wall, m looking much more Star 40. Here is a picture of it in 1862, a minaret just sitting on its own. Another dome in the background there. Almost, I mean, they say that the stone that's under here is the oldest in Jerusalem laid. This looks mud floody. The west front but also looks war devastated and you just get the feeling that this area has never seen peace. Here's a panoramic view and you can sort of get a better idea of the Starfort shape of the western wall structure. Perhaps we can zoom in here having dial up internet today and here's that crenellated style again here in Jerusalem and just looking like constant barrage after barrage of perhaps catapult and just continually reinforcing and building up and just being destroyed over and over again every time it changes hands so do so does the artwork and this is very bastion star fort look and again 
crumbling, broken, damaged, not even. Perhaps once a beautiful wall like this, and then rushed jobs through war, patching it together with these smaller dinky stuff. And as you can see, all this area is... I mean, this area is the most holy place on Earth, and it looks like a battle zone. It looks like Verdun after World War II. Only Verdun was hit by the biggest barrage of artillery in our history. But I feel like the ancient people that build some of the places that we've looked at, I, th I feel like there were a culture of, or a civilization of larger people, perhaps much further back in time, and the residues of that tribe civilization were still apparent in the late 15th, 16th century and earlier, perhaps a few more in the time of the Bible. Here is David, the giant slayer, they say, killing Goliath for his king, King Saul at the time, a close friend of Saul's son. And they say that Saul was a coward, incompetent and not able to fight his own battles, so David stepped up. And here's young David. Look at Goliath's shield being carried by an Israelite. And they say that the Israelites camped outside the city for 40 days, and he taunted the city, the civilians every day. Here's David presenting the giant's head to King Saul. So are we just interpreting this as, um, and perhaps it has nothing to do with the giants and they never exist, but each to their own. And I truly believe that giants once walked this planet.